Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you 30 amazing things that you can do in North Wales. So this is one of the most beautiful and diverse regions in the UK and this video has locations spanning from Anglesey to Snowdonia and even more. And to maintain some sort of organisation to this video, we are going to start in North West Wales. We're going to make our way across to the east. So this would also be a perfect North Wales road trip. So our most westerly location is this. This is a remarkable feat of engineering that carries the Clangollen Canal over the River Dee. It's actually the longest and highest aqueduct in Britain and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Just five minutes down the road from here is the gorgeous town of Clangollen. Make sure to do the peaceful walk along the river for some beautiful, serene views. And also located on the hill overlooking this town is one of my favourite hidden gems uh, in North Wales, and that is Dinas Bran Castle. It's a bit of a tough walk to get to the top of this hill, but it is worth it for the stunning views over the Dee Valley. So let's head right up to the north coast now and um, onto a very famous seaside resort known as Clandudno. This is actually known as the Queen of the Welsh Resorts and it has a long promenade, a pier, and the longest pier in Wales that is, as well as a cable car. The cable car in question takes you up to the top of the Great Orm, which is a limestone headland with ancient mines, a tramway and a nature reserve on the top. Just below Clandudno is the town of Conwy, which is famous for its medieval castle and walls. So let's start with the castle. It's a medieval fortress built by King Edward I in the 13th century, and it is one of the best preserved castles in Britain, with eight towers that you can climb every single one, by the way. The town of Conwy is a great place to visit if you love history, nature, and culture. You can also visit the smallest house in Britain here and explore its historic streets. So we are entering Snowdonia now, the mountainous national park that covers 823 square miles. It's home to every single mountain in Wales that is over 900 metres high, including the country's highest mountain, Snowdon, which we'll get to later on. So continuing on our trend, we'll begin in the west, and our first stop is Swallow Falls. This is a spectacular waterfall, and it's actually one of the most visited natural attractions in Wales. But it's located very close to Betsy Coed, which is my next location. It's an absolutely charming village, surrounded by forests, rivers, and waterfalls. Bonus point, if you head just down the road from Betsy Courage, you will get to this amazing little cafe, which is very ironically titled The Ugly House. It actually dates back to the 15th century, and it's said to have been built by two outlaw brothers who wanted to claim squatters' rights by building a house overnight. Okay, so going east from here, we are now in the heart of the Snowdonia Mountains, my favorite part of North Wales because I just love mountains. I can't get enough of them. So now I'm gonna tell you a few mountains to climb. So I'll start with the most obvious, I guess, which is Snowdon. Um, this is the highest mountain in Wales and England at 1,085 meters above sea level. It's also one of the most iconic landmarks in Britain with its distinctive shape and summit ridge. There are a total of six different paths up. The most famous is the pig track, which is the most direct, uh, but I would suggest an even better option would be the Watkin path, home to so many beautiful waterfalls on your way and a very fun scramble at the end. But either way you go up, the views from the top of Snowdon are absolutely breathtaking, most of the time. <laughs> that is. I just love the views here. Yeah. They're incredible. Unbeatable, eh? I know. Now a mountain for the more adventurous of you because this one is a little bit of a challenge. Pretty much a scramble the whole way up, but it is so fun if you're up for a challenge. And that is Trifan. It's one of the most challenging mountains in Snowdonia, in fact, with its jagged peaks and steep slopes. 
It's famous for its cannon stone that you can find halfway up, which is a very scary walk, but an incredible view over the valley. Okay, I want to mention one final mountain, and uh, this one's very close to Trufan, actually. It's Glider Vala. This is the highest peak in the Glidderar range, and another of the more challenging hikes in Snowdonia. So now let's head to the village, which is quite literally in the middle of Snowdonia, which means it's the perfect base of operations, I suppose, to stay if you're planning to explore these mountains, and that is Bed Gellert. It was named after a legendary dog that saved its master from a wolf. You can actually visit the grave of Gellert, which is marked by a stone monument. You can also enjoy some scenic walks along the river and the picturesque village streets as well. So now for another castle. It's been a while since we had a castle and of course Wales is the country with the most castles than any other country in the world. So obviously we have to have a lot of castles in this video and this one is a good one. It's Penryn Castle, which is a 19th century Neo-Norman castle that was built by a wealthy slate quarry owner. The castle is surrounded by beautiful gardens and parkland to walk to your heart's content. So speaking of the wealthy slate quarry owner, obviously that was his castle, so let's visit his quarry now, which is actually only around a 25 minute drive away, I would say. So this is a fascinating industrial heritage site where you can see the remains of the old buildings, the machinery and the railways. It's such a hidden gem in Snowdonia and could quite possibly be one of my favorite places here. At this slate quarry, you get an incredible view over Lin Padan from this point here. So let's head down now into the valley because here is also located the village of Clamberis. And there's a couple of things to note that you can do here. The first is the National Slate Museum, which tells the story of the slate industry that shaped the region. So it's the perfect museum to round off the slate quarry adventure. And as a second point, you should also head to the shores of Lin Padan for the most photographed spot in Snowdonia. And that's this, the Lonely Tree. So we go right over to the coast now, to the harbour town of Porthmaduk. It is a beautiful harbour town with a few amazing things to do nearby, making it a great base for exploring this part of North Wales. So let me tell you some of those great things to do now. Firstly is the most unique location in this video, because this is Port Merion, a colourful village designed by architect Clough Williams Ellis in the style of an Italian village. So, I do think it's safe to say that there is probably nothing else like this in Wales. It is located on a private peninsula near Porthmadog, surrounded by gardens and woodlands. Also in this area is another castle, a very good one, Harlock Castle. Built by Edward I again and perched on a rocky hill overlooking the sea. And it's really great to climb the towers and walk along the walls to admire the really amazing views over the Snowdonia mountains that you can get from here. And finally is Black Rock Sands. You can walk here from Porthmadog. It's a beautiful coastal walk going through some of the most amazing Welsh coastal scenery in this area. So I would just totally suggest it. So let's head up north now. Uh, we're heading very close to Anglesey, but we've got a couple more stops on the mainland before we cross over the bridges. The first is Carnarvon, a beautiful town home to one of the most impressive castles in Wales. And just next to this is Dinas Dinell Beach. The reason I like this beach so much are the remains of the Iron Age hill fort and Roman watchtower that you can see on the cliffs overlooking the beach. Okay, it is Anglesey time. Let's cross the bridges over the Menai Strait and let's see some of the rich history, stunning scenery and attractions that Anglesey has to offer. So as we've just crossed the bridges, let's actually start right there because to be honest, the view over the Menai Strait is beautiful. It has two famous bridges that span it. First is the Menai Suspension Bridge and then the other is the Britannia Bridge. And just next to them, actually just 
five minutes away. As a bonus honorable mention in this video, you could check out Clan Fire, which is the very, very, very shortened name for this name. Uh, it's a very small town, but if you want to see the cool name, that's just perfect little stop. Now to our final castle in the video, which is Beaumaris Castle. And you may notice that this castle looks a little bit unusual, what with it being a bit short and stumpy. And that's because the castle was never actually completed due to lack of money as well as manpower. You can climb up the battlements and enjoy the views of the town though and the sea and really just see this one-of-a-kind unfinished castle. On the south side of Anglesey now, let's head to another island off Anglesey. It's connected to the mainland by a sandy beach that can get covered when the tide is in, so best to go at low tide unless you want wet feet. The island is named after St. Dwynwen, the Welsh patron saint of lovers who lived there in the 5th century. It actually has a chapel dedicated to her on the island. It was just such a peaceful place to visit, especially at sunset when we went. I really couldn't suggest it enough. It was beautiful. Over towards the tip of Anglesey now, we are starting to get towards the end of the video but there's still a few locations left and the first is a very out of this world location and that is Paris Mountain. It's a hill that was once the site of a large copper mine in the 18th century. In fact the mine was so productive that it supplied most of the copper in the world at that time. The mine has also created a very unique landscape of colourful rocks, craters and pools today that, yeah, really looks like you're on another planet. Just 20 minutes on from here and you get to the coast, which is where we're going right now. Because we are at Porthwen Brickworks, which is a disused Victorian brickworks that produced fire bricks for steel making furnaces. The brickworks is located on the western side of Porthwen, a bay with crystal clear water and white sand. They really have a haunting beauty today with its kilns, chimneys and rusty machinery still just standing among the ruins. And for our final stop, we have finally made it. Let's, uh, let's head right to the tip of Anglesey, to Holyhead and the South Stack Lighthouse, a very iconic location. It was built in 1809 and it offers spectacular views of the cliffs and the sea all in one. And that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. There were so many locations in it. I mean, I could have probably narrowed it down even more, but there's just so many great things in North Wales. I just had to say them all. But saying that, if I did miss anything out of the video, uh, maybe you know some locations and I haven't mentioned it, please do mention it in the comments because that way we can all share ideas. So if you do want to see even more from Wales, please feel free to check out my full uh, Welsh playlist. We have been all over <laughs> the country. I mean, seen so many things. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.